Praise the Lord. Today's word of the day. Today's word of the day comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. And Moses said in the story here, God is the one, um, obviously speaking through Moses. But anyway, he says, take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make for yourself a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Amen. Uh, so let's just look at, we're going to back up a little bit so that we can see what happened at, uh, where was it? At Horeb. So let's see, we're going to back up to verse 11 here. Moses is telling the story about what happened. They've been in the wilderness now 40 years and they're getting ready to go to the promised land. And so th this is what he's recapping the whole thing. So starting at verse 11, then you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, that's Mount Horeb, and the mountain burned with fire to the midst of heaven with darkness, a cloud and thick darkness. And the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the fire. You heard the sound of the words, but saw no form. You only heard a voice. So he declared to you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tablets of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might observe them in the land which you cross over to possess. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make for yourself a card for yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. And it goes on to talk about birds and fish and all kinds of things. Uh, so that's our word of the day. So how does this apply to us? All right, they went, they came out of Egypt. And they came to the mountain and God showed up. They didn't see God, but they heard him. He gave them the commandments on tablets of stone. And now they were to try to live them out. We uh, obviously are not going to live by tablets of stone and all that. We didn't go to a mountain and see the fire or anything else. But when we, when God called us, we heard his voice. His sheep hear his voice. We heard his voice and he did something in us. And we knew he was real. And then we, we, we received his commandments. Watch this. In Ezekiel 36, 26, God said in the future, and he was talking about us today, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. This is what happens at salvation. I will take the heart of stone, remember the stone tablets, out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. So he takes that stony heart of the law out and gives us a heart of flesh. Then in Jeremiah 31, 33, he says, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. So what God did for them, he wrote on tablets of stone, the law, they heard his voice we we heard his voice we encountered god he changed our heart and he wrote on our hearts the commandments to love god and love people that's why the inner person loves god and his ways his word and all that but our flesh hates it that's the old man but he gave us a heart to love him a new heart a heart of flesh that he wrote his commandments on that we want to do his will even though our flesh fights against it. But we have a heart for God now because he saved us. He gave us that new heart. So now when we look at this word today and we think about it, take careful heed to ourselves for we saw no form when the Lord spoke to us in that moment that he called us and we responded. We encountered God. We did not see anyone but we heard his voice. He did this work. He put his commandments in our heart. Lest we act corruptly and make for ourselves a carved image in the likeness of form of any figure, the likeness of male or female. And what I feel like today is God is telling us, 
remember that it was me who saved you. It wasn't that person that maybe God used. And it's not going to be a person today. We may all of a sudden, we may, God may lead us to, uh, uh, we, we hear a sermon maybe on YouTube or somewhere and, and it really spoke to us. And all of a sudden we start looking to that person as our savior and we start focusing on that person or maybe it's a song that touched us and all of a sudden we start listening to that worship person and that person becomes our focus but god uses everybody and everything to speak to us and what he doesn't want for us to is to start focusing on the messenger but focus on the one who gives the message and he will put us under a covering we're going to talk more about this on this on the next uh, campus study, I believe, but it, he will give us a covering. He'll give us pastors, elders that we can get prayer from and all that, but he will teach us in many ways through many things, but he doesn't want us to latch on to the people or anything that he uses. They are just vessels for him to communicate to us. I hope I'm explaining this in a way that we can see it. Now, we can idolize pastors. We can idolize worship leaders. We can idolize all kinds of things, and that's not what he wants for us today. As a matter of fact, I'll give a testimony that um, uh, the Lord let, sent Pris Sister Priscilla and I on a cruise, and uh, it was a Christian cruise, and it was for God to speak to me about things in the future and plans, and they had worship groups coming, and when one certain worship person was going to come that one night, we could hear in the distance all the people screaming. We were planning on going, as a matter of fact. And uh, it was they were all screaming when he was coming closer. And then God spoke to both Sister Priscilla and I and said, that is idolatry. It's, God can use that person to deliver truth and touch hearts, but it's not the person that we look to. It's God that we keep our focus on. So praise the Lord for speaking to us about that. And he'll do that for all of us. Uh, if we are open to it. Praise the Lord. So Heavenly Father, we ask you to search our hearts today. We don't want idols in our heart. And if we do happen to have any, we ask you to reveal it to us. We know you're not condemning us. All you want us to do is see it, surrender it, you take it away, and we continue to walk with you. It's that simple. And so just help us be free of these things and help us keep our eyes on you and allow you to speak to us in any way you see fit. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord. And that is our word of the day. Praise the Lord.